Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another edition of Lisa Renee TV. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button before you leave today. If you do like what you see and make sure to thumbs up the video and to share, share, share on all your social media sites that you happen to be on. So welcome back and happy Sunday. <laughs> I hope everyone's having a great Sunday so far. I know I am personally. And I'm happy to be back in front of the camera as usual. Okay, so let's jump right into our topic. So the topic for today is loving him for the lack thereof. So first Bible verse that we will discuss because there's a few verses here. Uh, Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. So pretty powerful stuff, right? So how to love God through seasons of financial, emotional, mental, physical lack. Sometimes all those end up all rolled into one, which in turn causes psychological stress. So a lot of us are very familiar with that, right? You know, having a lack of something, um, a lot of us may struggle with a financial lack or a lack of love in the form of like not not having a spouse or not just feeling unloved in general you know just not feeling love in your life a lack of patience or a lack of trust in people you know so we there's a lack basically in this video is defined as just any deficiency in any area in your life you know it may be financial it could be love it may be courage maybe trust whatever you feel lack of peace you might have any peace you know in your home in your life whatever you feel in lack of um so my story, I'll give you a little bit of my story um, of just me and my family going through some forms of uh, like financial difficulty within the last year, actually. Um, so in that season last year, it was very tough on me and all of us, but it really helped uh, to nurture my faith in the Lord tremendously. In fact, my relationship with him was growing and evolving at the same time. So I was new in my walk with him. Um, and I had to learn to lean on him entirely and trust him. Um, not a job, not any counterfeit career opportunities, but just him. I had job dissatisfaction issues as well. So that made things harder for me. I wanted to leave. Every time I tried to leave my job due to some other supposed opportunity, um, you know, some, some supposed counterfeit career opportunity, it was false and the door ended up getting closed in my face. Um, so the doors were closed and at the time I was I was like really incensed with anger and I became depressed But as my relationship grew in Christ He revealed reasons why I was there at my job my current job I still have now and I understood I was only being protected instead of rejected So a lot of times we look at rejection is like it's rejection, right? We feel crummy, but he's really protecting you for something. You have no idea why he you know didn't allow that door to open so it's hard to Sometimes it's hard to love God or trust God 100% when you have nothing, um, like your bank account is on negative zero, and you can't really see any solutions anywhere in sight. So we went through that as a family. Um, you know, we had like some financial difficulties. Uh, my mom was having difficulties with her job, her employment. I'm having difficulties at my job. Um, my brother, he was in college. He's getting ready to graduate now. Yay! He's got actually graduated next month. Um, he's graduating early, actually. We were not expecting this. That was just a blessing from God that really, um, got you know, just bestowed upon us <laughs> this year. We were not expecting that at all. So God is good. But um yeah, we we just last year was just a lot of, you know, turmoil. We did not know what was going on. You know, some days we like, I don't know where our help is coming from. We don't know where to you know, because you you know, you like, okay, we need money for this, we gotta do this, this has to be paid and, and this, that, and third, and you you trying to figure it out, you know, and, and me, I was new in my walk with the Lord. And so that makes things harder because it's almost like you know the lord is like um you know you guys are in a new marriage to each other and you're learning this is a new friend in your life and, and you learn to trust this person so anytime that we let somebody in that's new it's like okay i like you and you know i think you're pretty cool so far and i'm i'll trust you yeah i do trust you a little bit but I don't really, you know, know you all the way yet. And so my trust for you is not where it should be. And so when you want me to really put all my faith in you, 
I can't. And I struggle with that. And that's what I struggled with last year. So as far as financial issues and worry about everyday stuff like bills being paid, what's for dinner, what we're going to eat, groceries, and anything we need to buy or whatever it was, it's like anytime there's a struggle with it, you, you know, if you're underemployed, you already know, you guys know, if you're unemployed, you're not really where you need to be anyway, you don't even want to be the job that you and you have your career goals down pack, you working on your career, but you just haven't gotten there yet. And sometimes you don't even know how you're going to get there. So it's like you're losing faith. Your faith is being tested, like test after test after test is coming and it's hitting you hard. And you're like, God, why, what are you doing? Like, you don't even understand. You think I did, I do something wrong. You have no idea why you and your family are going through all these tests and trials. And you feel like God has left you in the dark, really. <laughs> you know, you like, I, I don't even know. Like, you feel like you, you keep having this stuff ripped away at you. It's like you've been stabbed on both ends of your body. Like somebody's taking knives and just stabbing you constantly. And you're like, what do we do? It was so wrong. And that's what we kept asking the question of why. Why, 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 why. That's all we wanted to know was why, you know. And we thought it was something really bad. And so God, of course, you know, we, we little did we even think that he had our back the whole time. And I had to keep faith. I had to. And my faith grew. My faith grew because I, I was in my word. And I had to get in my word. Even times when I was like, I don't even want, I don't even want to go there. I don't even want to bother. I had to do it. He kept talking about spirit. I had to get in my word and stay in my word. And I noticed that as the more I stayed close to God, the more I kept walking, even when days I didn't know why, even when days I didn't understand, when I wanted to bother when I was fed up, when I was depressed, when I wanted to give up, I kept going. And the more I walked with him, the more he revealed himself to me and he showed me the path and, the, and why he had me on a certain path, why he had my family in this certain position, why this was going on. So the more and more, and then now, you know, a year later, now we're looking at things in a whole new light because, you know, things have definitely improved and now you can understand, you can appreciate that season of lack when you did not have this and you didn't have that. But even in looking at when you didn't have that, you had all the things that you, you know, basically needed. And you realize when you say, okay, we was miserable, you know, then or whatever we was miserable, we had, we didn't have X, Y, Z, or we didn't know if we were going to have this, but we got through though. And then you ask yourself, well, how did we get through? The, <laughs> he's like, me, who do you think carried you when you couldn't walk on your own? Who do you think did all that? Who do you think fed you when you didn't know where your next meal was coming from, where you could you even buy your next meal or how you going to have grocery money? Who did that for you? Me. And that was the whole idea. <laughs> it was getting us to not idolize money. Because a lot of us idolize money and we don't even realize it. We're not doing it on purpose, but we just re we don't realize it. Money is the most important thing in our lives. We, we want to know, you know, we're all about when my check coming. Where's my money coming? I'm all about my money, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that, but just don't start to idolize your money. When you start to always, like, your money is a god to you. You know, your your money is up here. God may be right about that. He wants to be up here. And then your money, will it will stack, stack, stack. <laughs> you know, he got your back. But it's just, you know, he needs to be always above, you know. So you don't want to be getting to a point where money is the most. Because it's not the most important thing in the world. And a lot of times we, we really start praising that money too much, you know. And that definitely is something I learned. And one of the problems was like you you get so into materialism and you're so into money, you're so into like what you what you have on your back, what kind of clothes you got, and you know, going shopping and this, that, and whatever. You know, so it's really sometimes it's a wake up call. It's not even it's not to make you suffer, but it's to wake you up, you know, to get you to come to him, to lean on him and get you to see like, hey, I'm in control here. I got you. I have you. I always had you. I just wanted you to, to, to see that. But even through your season of lack, when you feel like you didn't have anything, you ate every night. You were not hungry. You weren't cold. You <laughs> you was okay. You know, your bills was paid. Did nothing get shut off, you know. And, and and even if you had a situation where something got shut off or whatever, you know, it was like all of two seconds and it was, <laughs> it was back on. You know, <laughs> you know, it was like, come on, you know. It's like, you know, he's like, I got you. I, I got you all the way. You know, so what are you so afraid of? You know, it's like um, the story in the Bible when they, um, I got to find that story. I can put it, there, put it there. I think it was, I don't know if it was Peter. Or it was, I don't, I'm going to find it. And I'm going to put it down. I just thought of it. I got to put it in the morning info box. But it, when they were on the boat and the wind started, you know, kind of, 
really acting acting up and they got so scared and they like master master wake up you know and they were so afraid and he's like what are you worried about? Like, why did you lose faith? Basically, he's like, why? Why would you? You know, he's like, because he calmed. He woke up. You know, Jesus was sleeping. He woke up. He calmed the sea and calmed everything. And everything just stopped. You know, and he's like, why did you lose faith? Well, what are you so worried about? You know, <laughs> I am here. You know, so he's here. He's gonna calm that that sea, that storm you were having. You know, I mean, all he gotta do is just, you know, he can just. Just blow, just put his finger, just whatever, just one move, and it, it, it'll calm, you know, it'll just stop, you know, and you're like, oh, really? And you sitting here yelling out, it's being frantic, and, you know, it's nothing to him. He's like, I got you, I got you, you know, so he just, I had a situation once, but I think it was last year, I was, like, worried about, you know, grocery, we think about grocery money, and all of a sudden, I, have, I had to do my daily Bible reading, and I happened to open up. To this chapter here. <laughs> Consider, this is Luke 12, 24. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no store on a barn. Yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? So, I, <laughs> when I read that chapter, I was like... But, you know, <laughs> and it just really got me going. Like, I mean, basically, he, he feeds the lilies of the field. He feeds the lilies of the field. He feeds the birds, you know. Um, so why in the world, you know, if your father can feed a bird, you know, <laughs> he, he can feed birds. He can feed, you know, the, the lilies. Don't worry. You know, the you know the flowers and all that kind of stuff. They get fed. So why do you think you're going to starve? You know, why do you feel that? And after I read that chapter, it restored my faith instantly. After I read that chapter, all of a sudden it was worked out. I wasn't getting paid to maybe I guess a few days later. And it, and I thought maybe, okay, God will just let us have a little something until you don't pay it. Oh, it was more food than I imagined. I, I, it was crazy because... I was I, my mom had fixed dinner at night. She was off work, and she was like, "Oh, I fixed dinner. I got a good dinner for you." It was a whole, it was so much food. I was like, "Oh, when <laughs> you know, I was just sitting there, just floored." And, and I mean, if you allow him to show himself to you, he will do it. You know, all he needs is just a little bit of your faith, and he like. Bam, that's all I needed. All I needed for you to just say, I trust you. I trust you, Dad. I trust you, Daddy. I really do. You know, and I I mean, I was like, okay, after I read that, that Bible channel, I just chilled out. Went to work, came back home, all this food. I was like, it's not even payday. And, <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, thank you. I didn't know. I thought you were going to give us a little something. I, I I didn't even expect a whole lot. And he's like, no, 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 no. I don't get no little nothing abundance you know <laughs> you know and that's what he always does we always expect we underestimate how much he'll do we always underestimate ourselves he doesn't you know mm. shows you how he sees you it speaks to how he sees you you know like it's how much he loves you hey <laughs> you know so god will take care of all our basic needs like food shelter clothing paying bills on time it's all a matter of surrendering those concerns to him. We're all struck with the independent woman syndrome or independent man complex. But let's try being independently dependent on him only, okay? <laughs> Don't even wait to lay heavy burdens onto a future spouse. Those are things that God should handle only. So even when you get married, same thing. You know, even though your husband is like the head of the house and everything, that's a whole other thing. But, you know, still, you know, like certain, certain things, you know, God got you. So worry is the opposite of being at peace and really enjoying his rest. Worry is the opposite of being at peace and really enjoying his rest. So I want that I want that to sink in for you guys. When you are worried, it's the opposite of, of really being at peace and enjoying the rest of God, entering his rest state. Okay, and that's a beautiful place to be. I felt it. Wonderful. <laughs> Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received, you received it and it will be yours. So when you pray for something, like y'all say, well, I pray and it has been answered. I don't know if it's going to be answered. That's the reason why <laughs> you feel like it ain't going to happen because you, you already plant that seed of doubt within yourself. You're like, I pray for it, but I don't know if he's going to do it anyway. I'm not going to even really, you know, worry about it. I don't even, I'm probably not going to have Do not do that. Stop that. Because every time you do that, you kill it for yourself every time. Please stop. You know, stop. You killing your faith. Do not do that. You Even when you have, you feel the enemy coming up and you like, you know he ain't going to do it. You know it ain't going to happen anyway. 
No, silence that voice. You got to you gotta start speaking like, I know my daddy loved me. I already know he got it. He got it in his hand and go about your day and you will see. You be like, what? What? And he'll bring it through, you know, for you, like in bigger ways than you ever expected. You know, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That's Hebrews 11, 1. So, hello. <laughs> That's where your faith comes in. So your faith will help you along with the prayer that you that you just said. So sometimes a dry season or a season of lack is just a an area. No, wait. I'm sorry, just not an area, a prereq for what's next to come. It's basically practice. It's like pre-prep for abundance or increase. That's all it is. So during my season of lack or our season of lack, God was kind of churning things out of you that you didn't need. He's just kind of he's getting you ready for abundance. He has to get you ready for a bigger blessing. Because sometimes you ain't ready. You know, we say we're ready. He's like, no, you're not. Not yet. Let me work on you some more. I'm going to get you ready for this. I got, you know, he got so many big plans in store for you. He's like, I'm going to give you everything you ever ever dreamed of and more, but I need to get you ready. So you may go through a season of lack of this, like that. You know, it's not, and he's going to take care of you. You're going to have everything you need. Trust me on that one. But it's just, you know, I need to get you ready, you know. So don't get upset when you go through that little dry season. It happens to everyone. It does. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you from experience. You know, it happened to me. I know. You know, it happens. So Matthew 25, 23 his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So that is a beautiful thing. You know, enter into the joy, into the blessings, the abundance. If God can trust you with just a little, then he knows you're ready to handle much, much more. Keep your life free from love of money and be be um, content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's Hebrews 13, 5. That is my last Bible verse for the day before I get out of here. I want to leave you with that. Just know he's never left you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's got your back. He loves you so much. He loves you like, I mean, times gazillion. I can't explain to you how much he loves you. You know, so... I made it. <laughs> I made it through. There was times I was like, I was so depressed and so back into a corner of darkness that I, I could see no light. There was no light. I'm like, no, there is no light. You know, <laughs> there is no light at, at all. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to ever, we're not going to ever make it out of this. You know, I mean, you have days like that when you get, I mean, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I thought I was going to like self-implode, you know, because <laughs> I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. You know, so I know that feeling. If you if you feeling that way now, like you are so not alone. Don't sit up here and say, I'm so alone. I get it. Okay. I totally get it. And he gets it too, you know, so just give it to them, okay? <laughs> just, you know, it's about time you put them heavy bags down. I know they weighing your arms down, your heart down, your body down. Give, give it to them, you know? Don't don't even trip out. You having a season of lack right now, it's not going to last always. You know, how you survive the season of lack? This. <laughs> okay, that's what I did. I had, I had to get through that. I had to get in his word and get through that. That's how I got through my season of lack. I stayed favor with my word. I have to read because it's going to teach you so much. He's going to speak to you in that word and he'll speak to you in your spirit too. You know, you have to. That's how you learn his voice too is by reading his word. Read the word. You have to. You know, you have to. You have to read it. These are not just bubblegum candy pop words just for fun. Like, oh, this, you know, oh, this is just some fancy cliche. This is something nice to say when you're going through some, you know, a, a bad season. No, that's the truth. <laughs> you know, he didn't write this just for to, to tickle your ears. No, this this is real good stuff. This is real stuff. This is for real stuff. You know, <laughs> you know, this is for your life. So this is. The bread of life, you know, <laughs> he is the bread of life. So read the word and also talk to him. That's the only way you're going to survive this season of I don't have this, that, and the third. Whether it be financial lack, emotional lack, you know, lack of trust, lack of love, lack of a spouse, lack of whatever you are having deficiency in in your life, you know, he will be your sufficiency because. My grace is sufficient for you. And that's what he's there. His grace is sufficient for you. That's all you need, you know, to survive each day. So, bam. <laughs> that's all I got for you. But I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. I hope you subscribe. I hope you were blessed by this video. God loves you. I love you. And I'm going to see you guys later. Have a blessed week. Bye.